watching Rock Titan TV, featuring Chuck Perry, Cumbisto, Blanco, and Alice Cooper. Hey everybody, welcome to Rock Titan Television, I'm your host Scotty J. I've got an awesome guest with us today. You know him as the bass player for the most legendary shock rocker in all the land, who is Alice Cooper. That being said, he's also got a brainchild of his own known as Bisto Blanco. I am speaking with Chuck Garrick. Chuck, how are you, sir? Yes. Yes. Hi. Live from Berlin, dropping January 19th. Yeah, man. Yeah, so. About it. it was a great tour we were part of. Uh, obviously, it's our first live record, so uh, we're really excited, you know, for this release. And, uh, I mean, we still talk about that tour, uh, that time over there with the uh, Versailles Uncles. Uh, right. It was 19 shows throughout Germany, Austria, Switzerland. It was a good time. Uh, it, it was life-changing for, for us as a band and as, as, a, as a band of brothers and sisters as well. So, uh we're excited for this release, man. I think uh, Rat Pack has knocked it out of the park with their packaging and uh, all kinds of good stuff for for the hardcore fans and uh, for the newbies as well. So uh, we're looking forward to it. Yeah, good stuff. Now this is your third album. Obviously, you had you know Live Fast, Die Loud, and then your self-titled album Beast of Blanco and Live Live from Berlin, his uh, compilation of both of those. I, let me ask you first. Why Berlin? What was it about Berlin where you said, you know what, we're going to do a live album, and this is where it's going to be? Well, you know, it really wasn't planned out. When okay. we were on tour with the uncles, um, you know, we were doing, like I said, it was these large arena tours that we were part of. It just happened to be uh, one of the better nights that was recorded live for us. Um, Berlin definitely does have a certain energy to it. I mean, there's, there's definitely a vibe, a very artistic uh, rock and roll vibe there. I mean, it was a pretty rowdy crowd. We were looking forward to being in Berlin as well. So when we listened back to the recorded shows that we had, one of the better performances for us and had a little bit more of a vibe was that Berlin show that we ended up using. You know, I think it was the second night in Berlin. Okay. Uh, it, it just, I think there's also, uh, if you look back at the Uncles catalog too, they may have had a live from Berlin that as well it was a magical place it was a, it was a it was just one of those shows during that tour that uh, just sort of stuck and resonated with all of us nice nice now i got to ask you uh, with the you know your bandmates calico cooper you've yeah. obviously known her for a long time and yeah. i don't know that i ever heard the story or how public that's ever been how did it come to pass? Because obviously you've been playing with Alice for you know over fifteen years. How did it come to be that Calico, you know, became a part of Bisto Blanco? Calico and I do go way back. I mean, uh, we we laugh about that as well because it's just like we'll look back at old photos of each other. We're just like, oh my gosh, who are those two people? You know, <laughs> 15, 16, 17 years ago. So right. we've known each other for a long time. Um, I've always considered Calico as just, I always tell her this, I mean, she's an amazing actress and she's a very funny girl, she's uh, super talented, she can dance, she can act, and, but she can sing and she can also perform and she to me is the ultimate rock star. I mean it obviously trickles down in the bloodline, but she's just got it man, she's able to just snap and, and not she's out of reality. When she's on stage, she's just a completely different character. She understands, you know, how to perform and, and what it really means to the audience and she never breaks character. So Calico and I kicked around the idea years and years and years ago about, hey, we should start a band together. Just sort of just, you know, over a couple of drinks or just shooting the shit, you know? Right. And uh, when Bisto started to sort of become a reality for me. I had written a couple of songs, Breakdown being one and Live Fast, Die Loud being the other, that I heard Calico's voice on there, you know, okay. or a female voice, and Calico was the first person that was brought up, and we decided, let's give her a call, see if she wants to come down and, and be part of this thing. So when she came in and sang in the studio with us, it was magic. It was, it was, we knew instantly that that was going to be 
the, the sort of the missing link, you know, the one thing that I wanted be so to be was to have some sort of theatrical elements to it. And, and not only that, but just give the audience more than just one character or one person singing. There was a more to it in my mind than just myself. And I, wa- I really wanted to have Calico's energy and what she brought to a live show and on in, and in the studio to, to just sort of enhance what Bisto Blanco is and just separate us a little bit. Right on. But when she came into the studio, we knew it was something we wanted to try. So we, we did it. We did a tour together over in Europe, and we, we weren't quite sure what we were going to develop yet, and what we hadn't really planned anything out. Now we've really come into our own, you know. Yeah, we really have become uh, our own band now. You know, it's 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 interesting to see where we were in 2012 to where we are now, 2017, 2018. Yeah, right. Now, did you have to go through any particular blessing process with Alice? You'd be like, "Listen, I'm bringing Calico on board, and that's it." Yeah, you know, Coop and I are pretty tight, man. I think he he knows that you know Al, uh, Calico and I we, we have a really strong relationship. I think most importantly, he felt that she was uh, she was in good hands. Yeah, right and, on. He knew that there's there's a there's a protection element there, and, sure. and uh, you know I know sort of how how Calico ticks, and she's extremely easy to get along with, and like I said, she's just bleeds rock and roll through and through. So it was more of us kind of you know uh, protecting ourselves from her, if you will. You know she's uh, she's got it down, and uh, she was easy to tour with. And once Alice and Shep and the rest of the family saw the uh, sort of the audience love for what she's doing and, and the growth of Bisto Blanco, they immediately just had all kinds of support for it. So we definitely have the blessing of, um, of Alice. And once I keep playing him songs that we have her singing on the record, he just loves it. He, he, when he heard Feed My Frankenstein, his jaw dropped. Uh, okay, perfect segue, perfect segue, because I was just going to ask you about that. You know, obviously, Feed My Frankenstein, I was like, huge Alice Cooper, you know what I mean? You sure. played with him for years. Now you've worked out into Bisto Blanco. So again, you know, getting back to the whole blessing thing, you know, with Calico being involved in the band and whatnot. What was that like incorporating such a huge hit that you guys had together into Bisto Blanco? It was um, it was a bit of a touchy subject. Was it really? Calico, to be honest with you. Okay. She, she didn't really want to go into doing Alice Cooper songs. If she's going to go on stage, she's already got the name and the people know who she is. She really wanted to just sort of create her own thing. We didn't want to rely so much on, you know, Alice, my history with Alice and her being the daughter of Alice Cooper. So we, sure. we really wanted to make sure that we, we approached it as how Bisto Blanco would approach that song. Right, right. Um, once, Al, once Calico started hearing the arrangements in the studio and, and when we decided who's going to sing what, when we started messing around with it, I think it came clear for her and myself that this obviously sounded like a Bisto Blanco song. If you hadn't heard Feed My Frankenstein before, you wouldn't know that it was a cover. Right. And if you had heard it, you would hear that we definitely made it our own. And one of the cool things Alice Cooper said was he never thought that song could ever really sound sexy. But when he heard that, our version of it, he really just, uh, he loved it. He thought it was a very unique version of the song and just two thumbs up. Nice. Now, you know, let me ask you this, because obviously, you know, the years that you spent with Alice, and you've been in num- you know, involved with a number of other projects, uh, but, you know, being the bass player and the backup vocals with Alice Cooper, now you're going to Bisto Blanco, you're playing guitar, you're lead vocals, you're the principal singer-songwriter, I mean, this is your brainchild, you know, between yeah. you and brother. So, uh, how, how does that feel to really be able to own this, you know, and, and be in control? Yeah, man. I mean, it's it's very rewarding. I mean, uh, you know, it's 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 a lot more work. It's a lot more responsibility. And and as an artist, I like the fact that I'm co- sort of you know expanding a little bit. You know, growing as a musician and uh, you know taking on the responsibilities of a, of a completely different instrument. And that even includes being a lead singer. Sure. And uh, I'm lucky enough to have a wonderful songwriter in my wife, uh, Lindsay Garrick, who helps with the lyrics and the concept of Bisto Blanco. She's a, a, a very, you know, strong force behind it, and uh, we work well together. It sort of just gives me the confidence of knowing that what we're saying, it, I believe it. I 
as well. So that helps, you know, having that confidence at the back of your mind. I feel like we have a message. Uh, we have a concept behind our, 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 our songs and, and our show as well. But, you know, at first, man, I won't lie to you, it wasn't easy. It was, it was a big task I had taken on, singing and playing guitar. It was one of those things I hadn't quite, you know, mastered yet. And I still haven't mastered it, obviously, but I'm getting a little bit more comfortable with it, you well, know. Well, I'll tell you what. I mean, it looks pretty good live. I mean, just from the live <laughs> cuts that I've seen. And then your official music videos. And I definitely want to touch on that because, again, yeah. rock type music television, we're all about resurrecting that idea of music television. Go figure, you know. Sure. Right on, yeah. you know? So, true to form, you know, with your experience, and obviously Calico grew up in that environment, you know? I mean, from the master of theatrics on stage and just the just the grand scale of the live performance, uh, a lot of that is incorporated in your music videos. So there's a lot of acting, you know, and, and then you've got that demon with the horns and, you know, just the whole nine. Uh, how much fun is that for you? It's a lot of fun, you know? There's a lot of people, there's a lot of... A lot of sort of moving parts within Visto Blanco that you know that you'll see that happens on those videos. That then the reason why they happen are, are guys like Todd Junker, who you know directed and produced the Death Rattle video and, and sort of came up with that character for us. You know, so we brought him back into the into the fold for Death Rattle. Okay. I mean, obviously Calico Cooper plays a big part in, in arranging and, and producing and directing and writing storyboarding the, the the videos as well I mean, and we want it you know encompass what you would see live we want you to see you know obviously some of the things you would see live and the fun thing about doing the videos for us too is like we don't know what we're going to do we just go okay so the band's going to play live here say for instance the, the feed my frankenstein video where we didn't really you know work anything out just calico and i that's just calico and i just sort of playing off of each other and now we use some of those bits live because we just had so much fun doing them and that's the cool thing with bisto as well too is that uh, every show although it may be the same set list there, there's different it, it's, it's different movements it's it's not all the same sort of progression every night uh and that is another element that calico brings to this is you just never know what she's going to do and 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 uh it's exciting. It's exciting to be part of it. She drives me, I drive her, and we just really, uh, we have a lot of fun playing off of each other all night, you know? Yeah, now is she a chip off the old block or what? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, she, <laughs> she definitely gets it from her pops. But again, she's uh, she's really created this, this her own thing. Um, she's a great deal of confidence um, in her ability as a performer, and, and she's not afraid to shed the skin if you will and 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 uh just let it out when she's up there and and, and just be completely free and uh, it's not easy to do sure uh, and when you when you're there and you see it that you know trust me we've had our shows where there's twenty thousand kids and and it's the same show if there's you know a hundred so it's 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 sort of just the way we operate you know but um uh she definitely, she sort of got that stamp as well, you know, and right on. She, the entertainment stamp, you know, I call it. So, yeah, she's good. She's amazing, actually. Right on. Okay, so now again, you know, we're, we're, we're three albums into this, live from Berlin, dropping January 19th. So, everybody, make sure you go check that out, dropping via Rat Pack Records. But, uh, you know, Live Fast, Die Loud, and Visto Blanco, and Live from Berlin, obviously, like we're talking about now. And I know there's some touring in the future for you guys. Do I understand that you're actually going to be going on a cruise ship? Did, did yeah, I see so that? February 11th, we'll be on the Monsters of Rock cruise again. This will be our second year, oh. which is uh, cool for us. We went last year. We just had a great time. We had a, a really good reaction, and, uh, you know, a surprising reaction. I, I was actually um, kind of overwhelmed and, and extremely touched by the fans' reaction to Visto Blanco. There were so many people paying attention, um, from the promoters, to Eddie Trunk, to the fans in general. So we, we just really had a lot of love and support from the, them and other bands as well. And we're really looking forward to this year. Now, I don't suppose it's any coincidence that you just happen to be going on a cruise ship in winter, you know? <laughs> right? <laughs> Coincidence to that? Yeah, right. Oh my God, I, w I wish I could be there. You know? Yeah, yeah. Where are you located? I'm just outside Philadelphia. 
All right, yeah, so you're getting hit, too. I, I'm in Nashville, so it's it's, it's cold here. Um, you know, we just, but, uh, you know, it's when they book it, man. I think, like I always said, it, we just did the Dead of Winter tour with uh, with Bisto in, in uh, Europe. And, right. you know, wherever the, we're getting booked and wherever the fans are at, we're going there, no matter what the weather is. I mean, just give me a stage and give me some fans, and, and I'll, be, uh, I'll be fine. So, yes, it's convenient that it's on a cruise ship and it's going to be nice weather. And uh, that's that's definitely one of the things that's cool about those cruise ships is it's just sort of you got this packed in crowd of people and they know their job is to go see every single band that performs. Right on, right on. Now let me ask you this, you know, parting thoughts because I know you got to be on your way. But Chuck, again, thank you so much for your time. I really no appreciate it. Well, obviously, Life in Berlin is a compilation of the first two albums. Are you guys already in the uh, process writing new music? We looking at uh, you know some new material. Always, always yeah. writing, always recording. Um, we're pretty much, I would say, we're about halfway done with the uh, third studio of Visto Record right now. Nice. And uh, yeah, we. Uh, it was nice to go in this next time uh, into the studio. We really had, gosh, probably 17, 18 songs to choose from. Oh, wow. And we were, because we're like, well, shoot, we should just start working on the, uh, the fourth one as well, you know? So I think that's really. Part of our thing is is obviously we want to keep and continue to write and and, uh, and record music and tour as much as we possibly can and, and we're going to keep recording and we're going to keep touring and until people just stop showing up and, and right now they're they're continuing to show up. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be a problem. Somehow I don't yeah. think that's going to be a problem. So I mean, I would I, think I see the dedication with the bands, man. I see the people showing up with the tattoos and and, and all that stuff and and the stuff to sign and and. In showing up to one, two, three shows, and so I feel that you know, obviously we have a, a job to do as well, and that's produce and, and write music, so we can give it to our fans. Right on. Now, I would think the biggest challenge for you probably is you know uh, coordinating the projects you have with Beaster Blanco with Alice. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, working out those tour dates and stuff like that. It can get a little tricky. There's no doubt about it. I mean, you know, I'm constantly shucking and jiving and trying to figure out a way to make it all work at times. And I'm lucky enough to have bandmates that are able to bend and twist a certain way for for Alice's schedule as well. And uh, so uh, the idea is to just keep building Bisto uh, when I do have the downtime from Alice Cooper. Sweet, sweet. Well. Chuck Garrick, thank you so much for your time here on Rock Titan Television today, and congratulations on the launch of Live from Berlin, January 19th. Everybody, make sure you go check it out, and go check out the other albums. If you haven't done that, everybody, go get the other ones. Live well, fast, die loud. You get a mixture, you know, you get the last two records in one CD, and you can hear the live versions, and, uh, you know. And they can, just, and they can go get that on Rat Pack Records, right? Rat Pack Records, that's where they're going? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Cool. Rap Pack, hit them up, Rap Pack Records, and uh, I think it's at ThatStyleOut.com will bring you over there too as well. Sweet. All right, good deal. Well, All right. Mr. Garrick, thank you so much. Take care, brother. You got it.